Good morning, everybody. Quarter past 11 in the second hour of Tracks Momentum. And as you know, on Tuesdays, it is Spectrum that we shine the spotlight on things concerning youth, arts and culture. And today, live and direct from Studio Number 5 here in Media City Radio, Television, Malaysia. I have to accentuate that because our guest in the studio is someone who accentuates and captures moments of us in pictures. I have in the studios the very handsome, he's very Steve Jobs-like with his wardrobe selection today. He is none other than Vinod Raj Pillay. Hi, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Good morning. How do I call you, Vinod Raj VRP? V- VRP is good. VRP? Yeah. Okay. That's I used good. to be called AK back in school. Oh, is Because it? that's Anil Kumar. That's my name. So people used to call me AK, AK, AK. And then I shortened it to Anil. Just Anil is fine. Oh. So VRP. Yes. That's sir. how we can address you. Yeah? Let's go. VRP. Good morning, VRP. And uh, uh, you told me that uh, this is on your first time on radio. Yeah. So you're no stranger to the microphone, I suppose. Uh, something like that. Okay, great. Um, and, uh, you know, we usually have 30 minutes uh, for us to go on and speak mm-hmm. about the topics. But... Uh, I'm pretty excited because I think it may we may you know eat up another five or ten minutes more because depending on how this conversation goes. But before that, for the benefit of our listeners, VRP, give us a perspective, give us some context, some beef behind this man, VRP. Oh. Uzi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hello everyone. <laughs> yeah, my name is Vino Rajpale. You okay. can call me VRP. Okay. I'm from Kajang and I used to be an engineer. Wait, K Town. Yeah, man. High five. Me too. Really? Yeah. Which part of the yeah, south? Let's which, go. Let's go. Let's which go. part of the town you from, brother? Uh, let's say Villa Heights, like the Asajaya side. Oh, right. Okay. I'm at the border, Batu Sublas, Chiras. And oh, so you're on like the northern side, and I'm on the southern, southern side. Southern side. Oh yeah. man, the north side, boy. The south side, boys. Yeah, the boy. Today, bro. You talking, man? <laughs> okay, take. It away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I used to be an engineer. Okay. And then I left my job to pursue my passion. Okay. Mainly because as a kid, you know, mm-hmm. I, I loved drawing. Right. But I couldn't paint mm. at all. You know, uh, maybe because I didn't have the patience, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And then what happened was uh, in uni, mm. um, a friend of mine introduced me to Photoshop and cameras. Right. And then here I am like, whoa. Okay. You know, now I take a I, I click away and then I have this digital image right there. Okay. And I was like mind blown, mm. you know. That's how that's how I got into photography. Okay. But in terms of wedding photography, so then here here I am. Right. Uh I've I've already got a camera, I know how to take photos, but how do I monetize it, right? Mm. And so happens a cousin of mine. Right. He was already into the wedding industry. He's like, you know, come and join us and uh take some photos and see okay. let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know... You just got, you know, sucked into it. Sucked yeah? into it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I read somewhere mm-hmm. that you are actually an engineer by profession. Yeah. So from engineering, you transition into photography. Talk to us about that transition. What, you know, made you, gave you that eureka moment and say, VRP is going to rebrand himself. I'm not going to fix engines and, you know, solve engineering problems. I'm going to solve uh, problems. I mean, I'm going to create memories for people. How did that happen? Oh, this, this is an interesting one. So, mm-hmm. um... This was early in the morning at uh, at about eight ish when I was going to put on a report on my boss's desk. Okay, okay. some some serendipity. We're 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 going back. In yeah, time, we're going right? back in time, okay, right? Okay. So I walk into my boss's desk. I I see this beautiful sunlight just shining in through. Then I'm like, if only I can take a photo of this, <laughs> you know? Okay. And then and then and then and then that light goes to my boss's chair. And then I look at the chair. Then I'm like, do I see myself sitting in that chair in the next ten years? Right. I didn't. It didn't feel right. It didn't sit right with me. You know, okay. like I. I mean, look, look, look here. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm interpreting this scene as an mm. art form, but mm. I am in a different line of work. Mm. So maybe there's some hole that needs to be filled, right? Right. And that's when I felt like, you know what? So at that moment, you that discovered the moment. photographer in you. You found that artistry. Yeah. Right. That Did you, 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 you sort of trans transcribe that moment where you have to, you know, submit something to your boss and turn it into something artistic, and you said, man. I can actually make a living, a trade out of this, right? Correct. And that's where passion comes into the picture. Correct. We'll talk about your passion a little later. Now, I want to talk about um, your artistic work. Um, your photos actually have a very distinct artistic quality, and it's almost like paintings. Uh, so what inspires your style now, Vinod? Mm. Mm. Um, it's movies, okay. music videos, paintings, and comics. Mm. Like, uh, I draw inspiration from all of them. So when I watch a movie, right, I don't just watch it for the plot, but I'm more of like, my eyes are trained to see how the scene looks. 
So you look at the cinematography, cinematography the, of the things, colors, and the, the lighting. Colors, the lighting, mm. how it's being used. Even when I'm reading comics, I look at the panels and I'm like, mm. how did this guy yeah. draw something on a 2D plane and give so much depth to it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I, as a photographer, I'm converting something from a 3D plane into yeah. 2D. So how do I add depth to it? Yeah. So I draw inspirations from all of this. Yeah, you know? right. You know, I many years ago, I was actually in the creative industry as well. And oh. during my training when I was in uh, university, one thing we were thought to do was storyboarding, right? Mm -hmm. And what's amazing is that a storyboard creator, a storyboard uh, you know, artist would just draw something up with as much detail and depth as you mentioned. And they would just you know, show it up to the cinematographer and the guy would just put everything into perspective on screen. And it's amazing to see how they're able to do that. Right. Share some intricacies on how that transpires on screen, uh, Vinod. So like, um, for example, like how the light light is being played mm. right how it's being shined how do you light a scene photography is about light and shadows right manipulation of everything that manipulation right. of everything mm. and then there's also times when there's also manipulation after uh, okay. <laughs> in my case touch-ups touch-ups <laughs> right so if, in, as a wedding photographer you know every, not every time everything is perfect you know yeah. you'll have a beautiful scene and then at the right at bottom there you'll have a dustbin that yeah. you can't get rid of. I know. Oh, yeah, yes, so yes. Okay. that bit. And, and in terms of c cinematography, what I, I really enjoy is how they light up the scene. Okay. Like how they really mm. think. It's it's a dark space Yes. and then think of everything mm. like from the backlights mm. to the to the ambient lights, you know. Yeah. So that, that bit really intrigues me and I try to incorporate that with my work like how do i how can i use one light mm. and existing with, with existing lights and create a story out of it okay yeah. okay and you know in photography it's interesting <clears throat> because the the many niches that a photographer can choose to pursue yep. either wildlife nature sports you know whether it's current happenings why did vrp choose to specialize or rather pursue a niche in wedding photography it it's interesting uh mm. i i enjoy watching people Okay. It sounds weird. I enjoy watching people. I, I like to see moments unfold. Mm. So right after SPM, you know, when we were free and, and got nothing to do, I used to go to Mid Valley. Okay. I used to go to the center court. Uh -huh. I will, you know where Starbucks was in the yeah, middle there? Yeah, and I used yeah. to sit there and then I used to watch people and I used to see what's happening and I'll create stories in my head. Like, mm. for example, if I see this... Uh, Auntie being pushed in a wheelchair, then I'm like, oh, okay, probably this is. So it's a mini VRP monologue going on. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you summed it up really well. So I, I, so that showed me that I was interested in people. Huh. I was interested in how um, the street is unfolding, and then I was like, okay. And then I got introduced to weddings, right? So right. it all just fell into place. So like, okay, mm. yeah, I am documenting two people. Now, how do I show that they are in love? Mm. How do I show how beautiful the wedding is? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Great. It's it's very unique. Wedding photography, you know, it's just like when you talk about sports photographers, you know, they specialize in capturing the right moments. Like right. Where, if it's soccer, where before, uh, you know, a player takes a free kick or penalty or when he jumps in to head the ball after a corner. You've got to be ready for those moments. And right. that stems from experience of watching games after games and anticipation and benefit of hindsight. And I think you as well being, you know, in, in, in weddings, there are certain moments that yep. goes Correct. unnoticed. Correct. Only a few people notice and when it gets captured. Correct. And then when you share those images with the family members, oh my God, you captured this. You know, especially the moment when, um, you know, the groom is tying the thali yep. around the yep. bride. Yep. And then you see the parents looking at each other and they're like, oh, Correct. our son is finally married. Yeah, yeah. Our daughter is finally married. And then they're like, oh my goodness, you actually managed to capture this. Tell us about a memory that, um, you know, one of your customers actually shared with you and, and felt how felt really special of that one moment that you captured for them oh this one is um very personal so there's this one bride mm. that told me you see the the thing with me is like I, i'm interested in people so i tend to listen to their stories i'll let i'll ask them what they feel about it and what was their wedding is going to be about so then this bride tells me like how she's very close to her dad Right. Right. Okay. So she tells me how close she is to the dad, mm. and then I'm like, okay, I took that as a mental note. Okay. Right? So on on the wedding day, uh, as she's getting ready and stuff, that and then dad walks in. Mm. So dad walks in. He doesn't give any emotional reaction. So mm. then I I looked at it. So I, okay, you know what? Let's create a scene over here. So I went to the dad. I said, uncle, what you need to do right now is go and tell your daughter how beautiful she looks. Explain to her in words how she looks. Right. 
So he went in and he did that. Mm. And she teared. Wow. She teared. I mean, she was like, after tearing, yeah. she looked at me, Vinod, what did you do with my makeup, <laughs> right? Yeah. But then yeah. when I delivered the photos and then yeah. she looked at it and then she tells me like, this is one of the best photos mm. that I've... Okay. You know? What you just mentioned, VRP, really goes to show that being a photographer is not just about capturing moments with that tech gadget. It's you going out there and telling all those people to, you know, to, to do right. the things that will create these moments because you will never relive this day again. Correct. Right? Yes, you're right. Okay, great, great. I'm enjoying this conversation with you, my brother. Now, I tell you what, let's go in for a quick break. When we come back, I want to dig deep into your brain and understand your creative process, okay? All right, let's go. All right. Uh, for the, everybody who's tuning in, I'm now speaking to Vinod Rajpillay, a.k.a. V. RP. He's a photographer and he's talking to us today on Spectrum about the art of photography. Keep it right here on Spectrum at Tracks Momentum with me, Anil, on the mic. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Spectrum on Drax Momentum. I'm joined by my brother man from my uh, from my territory, I should say, from my turf. He is VRP Vinod Rajpille, a photographer or an engineer turned photographer, I should highlight that. And he's today talking to us about the art of photography. VRP, welcome back to Spectrum, man. Yeah, man. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about VRP's creative process. Okay. You know, creativity is something that is very, very subjective. Some yeah. people... Uh, get all their creative ideas when they are taking a cold shower. Mm -hmm. Some people get their creative ideas when they are contained in a quiet environment with no noise or whatsoever. Some people have it when they're sleeping and then they keep a piece of paper right next to them and then when something pops up, they wake up, they write it down, right? Correct. What's VRP's creative process? Being bored. Being bored. Being bored. Di like, like, dissect us. Give us some context. Yeah, so what I usually do is like, um, I think being bored brings out creativity in me so what i do so, is so, I, so I, I just just to put it yeah. put it into perspective you deliberately get yourself bored yeah okay how i i, <laughs> I cancel off social media i i stay out of the zone mm. you know i i just sit down and i ponder 
Okay. Okay. And the second phase of things things is like um, where my creative stems from is, uh, I believe, right, yeah. that you in order to be creative, you need to take two different genres mm. or two or more. Okay. Put them into a blender, blend it all together, mm. and try to make it make sense. Mm. You know, it can be like say for example, I do weddings, right? Okay. And then. I see people on the streets. Mm. So I had like street photography, a bit of street photography, a bit of wedding, chill uh-huh. it together. Like I said, comics earlier. Okay. So I I I read comics. I understand the mm. the the depth. So mm. now I take that. How do I add this into? Mm. Imagine Spider Man doing the Spider Man web slinging and all. How do you? Incorporate that into that. a wedding, wedding, yeah, right? and make it make sense. Mm. So you like that kind of a challenge? Yeah, yeah, I do. So if a couple came up to you and said, uh, "VRP, um, we're going to hire you, commission you for a wedding shoot, but we want every picture to look, look and feel like Gotham City," you're well, up for it? Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. Actually, in fact, I I would love that. I love challenges like that. Really? You know? Okay. So uh, on behalf of VRP right now, for everyone <laughs> tuning in, if you have such a dream of uh, having a wedding photo shirt that feels like Gotham City, oh yeah, feel free, yeah, look him yeah. up, okay, VRP. <laughs> <Let's go>. <laughs> <laughs> which which alludes me to my next question now. Yep. You talk uh, about how you love challenges. Yep. Uh, tell us about a moment where you faced a challenge, mm. right? Because it's it's when <clears throat> moments where we are faced with challenges and we overcome and we succumb over them. That's when we enjoy our job. We feel like yeah. this is why I'm doing it. It's so rewarding. I'm able to, you know, dissect it. I'm able to decode the problem that's in front of me and I'm able to come up with a beautiful end product and right. it's in front of me. It's it's concrete in the form of pictures and you get to see how your your customers respond to it, the smile on your faces, yeah, right? Yeah. So tell us about a challenge that you faced, how you overcame it and, you know, uh, uh, include some, you know, photography nuances into that and how it all unfolded. So it, it actually... The, the biggest challenge was at the very beginning, to mm. be honest. Um, being a someone who's new in the field without any portfolio, how do you get your clients to trust mm. you, to hire you, right? So what I used to do was, how I overcame the challenge was, mm. uh, again, going back to my Pinterest and mood boards, and okay. I used to screen grab a lot of things that I like okay. and keep it into my Pinterest and my social accounts. And then when I meet my clients, Instead of, um, I spent a long time explaining to them like, you know, okay, this is what I want to achieve. This is how I think your wedding should be like. You know, this is how I vision your wedding being like. And then I would spend 45 minutes per mm. client just to explain to them how I would like to shoot okay. and, and whether we are on the same page, mm. you know. Okay. Because end of the day, it's managing their expectation and them understanding my expectation, right? right. So... That was the first hurdle. Now, I don't spend as much of time because my portfolio speaks for itself. Right. Yeah. So, my advice for for beginners right mm. now is spend time with your clients. Like, explain to them mm. why, you're, why you're doing you. Mm. You know? Okay. Okay. And tell us about your influences in the field of photography. Maybe you could talk to us about some of the other photographers who have influenced you. Some other works that have been done by others that heavily influenced or inspired you for the matter? Oh, mm. uh, the first two Malaysian photographers that really uh, inspired me was one, Anna Rena, mm-hmm. and two, Kamal Esen. Okay. These two, these two people. And then through them, through their work, I, I, I found, how to say, like a, like a route, like a, like, a, like a way into seeing art, right? Okay. And then uh, I started getting influenced by photographers from overseas. Okay. Like Mr. Uh, Jonas Peterson, and mm. uh, there's this guy from Mexico. Uh, now that I think about it, his name's not popping. Okay. But yeah, Fer, Fer Juriasti, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. People like that. So, so these are the people that inspired you. Yeah. Any dream projects that you have in mind? Oh, mm. dream ones, yeah. Right, right now? Mm. Just I would say, I would mm. say mm. shooting in Yosemite in the US. Yosemite? Yosemite. Yosemite in, National Park? Yes. Ah. Under... Uh, during during firefalls in February. Why? Oh, the scene. Mm. It's w- so okay. Let me explain to you the scene. Okay? Okay. So there's two two mountains. Okay. Right. The sun sets in between the two mountains, okay. and the light gets somehow cut. And right, you get a slit of light, slither of light, mm. shining into okay. a waterfall, and make mm. it look like as though the waterfall is on fire. Okay. 
Okay. You know, imagine having two people right in front of it and with that scene. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's. I'm gonna pray for you. Thank in, you, man. In five years, when we meet up again, oh. you're gonna tell me, Anil, your cemetery was awesome, man. You should go check it out. No. Oh. <laughs> now I want to go back a bit and uh, talk mm -hmm. about that pivotal moment when you decided to become a photographer. Yeah. From being an engineer, and uh, touch on family reaction. Ah. Um, <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, so um, I told my mom about it. Mm. She goes like, "My son's an engineer. What do I tell my sisters? You know, what, what do I tell them about uh, this?" There goes all the yeah. Asian family, Parida <laughs> Bengal, yeah. Yeah, correct. <laughs> then, then I told my mom this like, "See, w one fine day, uh, yeah. you are going to be proud, and you're going to call all your sisters and tell them that look, my son's on TV, mm. right?" And and that moment came true uh, in 2019. One of my photos got. Uh, got into the world's best engagement photos. Ah. Yeah, top 50 engagement photos. Okay. And then some, I got some media uh, showcase with that and mm. then I came on TV, mm. Astro on uh, Will Do Girl. Right, right, right. So Indian families, yeah. you know, Will Do Girl is a thing for them. Yeah. So yeah. my mom calls up all this, is like, look, my son's on TV, you know, <laughs> and th that moment came true and okay. that was like one of my... So then it eventually she came to a point to accept Correct. that her son is doing well in his passion. Correct. Okay. And, and now she's preaching to her sisters and oh, everyone else okay. that they, your kids should ah. follow their passions. So you know? she's your PR ambassador right, right now. Right now huh? she is. Cool, man. Cool. <laughs> See, that's what we love about the things that our parents do for us, right? Initially, yeah, it's always a hurdle. But then once they right. start seeing us achieve the things that we're doing, then it's just a walk in the park. Great. Let's jump in for another quick break, uh, VRP. And when we come back, um, we will hear from you on uh, some advices that you have for young and upcoming photographers in the country. Okay? Uh, okay, okay. Welcome back uh, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you just tuned in, I'm now speaking to Vinod Raj Pillay. He's a photographer and he's speaking to us today on Spectrum on the art of photography. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we shall resume with the discussion. Keep it right here on Tracks Momentum. <laughs>
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Spectrum on Tracks Momentum. VRP is in the house today. He's a photographer, and today he's speaking to us about the art of photography. VRP, welcome back to Spectrum. Yeah, hello. <laughs> okay, now, VRP, um, I'm sure that uh, there are many listeners out there, the young ones, or even adults who have full-time jobs are aspiring to break into the world of photography to pursue their niches, just like what you've done in wedding photography. Yeah. What is your advice to them? Mm. On how, okay, maybe we can uh, start off by, um, you know, giving them pers some perspective on how should they systematically do it and break into the industry and pursue their career without, you know, letting them bleed too much, not just quit their job and then just yeah. go jump into the sea, okay. ocean, and then they don't have a source of income and the next thing you know, they just dump their uh, the passion and go back into their nine to five job, right? Okay, perfect. Mm. Uh, so I started off with um, understanding my my ratio, salary ratio, my income ratio. So as I was doing it part-time mm. and then I was doing, uh, I was an engineer full-time, right? So I was seeing like, okay, how is my progress? Like, mm. so am I earning almost similar to what I'm earning from nine to five mm. or is it slow or what can I do? Mm. That was first, my first criteria before jumping in. Second criteria was to always have like a backup savings okay. per se. For example, like I saved up about three months of my mortgages okay, just in case, mm. you know, emergency savings. Then the third one would be, uh, this I would have to thank my engineering background because mm. I was a project manager and I understood mm. how important time was. Okay. How to be more time efficient. Most of the most of the time with photography business, it's it's administri administrative things. Yep. And then the creative side of things. Mm. So with creative side of things, I like I told you earlier, I had to be bored, right? Yeah. That means I have to use a lot of time. Mm. And then on the administrative side of things, like how do I save time? Mm. How do I become more efficient? So I started creating started creating processes and I started implementing tools to make work easier. Mm. So it's I don't spend Last time, just for an example, like last time coming up with invoices and contracts will probably take me half an hour per invoice or contract. Right. Now it's 30 seconds to a minute. Mm. So, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's it's a cool thing that you say because when you become a freelance photographer, you're also an entrepreneur and you're a business right. owner Correct. and you're selling yourself as the product, your services. And then it's also important to strike a balance between focusing on your creative work and also... Uh, focusing on enhancing your skills as a business owner, you know, sales, marketing, administration, documentation, filing your taxes, so on, if you make exactly. really good money and so on. So, which alludes me to my next question, striking a balance. So, for many photographers, you know, balancing the artistic aspect of their work, you know, with the demands of running a business can be a challenge. So, how do you think they can actually strike a balance um, in maintaining this? Like I said, mm -hmm. coming up with tools. Tools, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of free tools available online. Or if your business is doing really well, then mm. there's paid tools that you can use. Like I have a CRM system in place that mm. helps me with funneling, sales funneling. Okay. So I get clients to come in, mm. go through my system, and everything is captured. Okay. All right. And then once, uh, once they are in my system, okay. and then they are like, okay, ready to go, mm. booking process is so easy. Okay. Just a click away, right? Okay. So yeah. That part, like get making sure the administrative thing, administrative side of things. Sorry, mm. if I pronounce it properly. Mm. You are making sure that that side of things is shortened, okay. and you spend more time huh. being creative. Okay. Or if you can, just mm. give it out to someone who can actually do it for you. Okay. You know. How much of your creative process <coughs> involves reading books? Do you read any books? I read, I read comics. Comics. I read a lot of comics. Mm. Books, I do, but. Mm. I'll be honest with you. Six mm. months once. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And what, what was the what was the last thing you searched for in your search engine? Wow. <laughs> wow. Good. <laughs> wow. Last thing I searched. Uh, it's for. okay if you yeah. can't mention. No, no. I'm just thinking right now because I searched quite a bit. Okay. Okay. I searched quite yeah. a bit. Uh, the last one would be. How to be even more creative. How to be even yeah. more creative. And what did you discover? <laughs> what I told you, like, oh, okay. bring two genres two, together two and blending genres. them together. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Um, and, and now my last question is uh, for your advice that you have. You know, you being someone with a significant amount of experience being in the industry. What's your piece of advice for all the young and aspiring ones out there? Um, 
never to sell yourself short. Mm. Um, know your worth at the very beginning. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Know because once you've already established yourself, it's really in the later stage is very hard to boost your value. Mm. So know your worth now itself. Mm. That my right. Know your worth and always. Make sure that you lay everything out on the negotiations table. Correct. And never assume that your clients know what you're worth. Correct. Because they will never know what you're worth until you you tell them what you're worth, right? Correct. They will never know. Right, right. VRP, time is of the essence. We're short of time, but I have to say it was such a great pleasure having this conversation. Thank you so much for setting aside your time for being with us on Spectrum. Any final words before we let you go? Smile always, guys. Smile always. That's you're, all. That's all I have. Smile always. Well, because beautiful. You, you never know. VRP <laughs> might be hiding somewhere to take a picture of you, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. You have a good day, all right? Thank you. All right. And that was a very enlightening conversation I had with Vinod Raj Pillay, an engineer turned photographer. And he spoke to us today on the art of photography. If you missed out on this very candid, interesting conversation I had with him, worry not. You can always head straight back, not to our Facebook page, but our official YouTube page and catch the replay there once again. Time on the clock, 47 minutes into the hour, which means in less than 13 minutes, we'll be crossing over to the RTM News Centre for the 12 o'clock news bulletin. And then right after that, Anil on the mic will be back with you for the third hour of Tracks Momentum. See you in a bit. Bye.